okie dokie. This one is a little bit different. This shoe is for a builder and normally he builds commercial grade facilities like factories and warehouses and that kind of thing. But this time he built a house. It's a pretty cool house. Goal of this video is to not use the word cool because I overused it last time. I think I used it like 25, 30 times. Not cool. Also, the owners just showed up a few minutes ago, so they're in there playing basketball. Spoiler alert, this house has a basketball court. Now, normally I shoot real estate in 14 millimeter. This time, we're gonna try the 24 millimeter, and I'm gonna come back if I think I need to go back through with the 14. Let's make sure we're good on battery, good on card space. Perfect, everything's Everything's going as planned. <laughs> Except for the people showing up. I wasn't, wasn't counting on other people being here. Am I talking quiet? That's probably why. I don't really want people walking in thinking I'm a psycho talking to myself. I'm kind of a psycho though. So it's a little, not messy in here, but there's just things from being freshly constructed. So I gotta move things around. I'm just gonna pile everything in one room for now. And then when I'm ready to shoot that room, bring it all back out. So, watch this. Oh, that's actually really heavy. No, oh, man. No. Oh, no. Okay, we'll start over here. I'm not that strong. Okay, yeah, that's just gonna stay there. Sorry. There's no light bulbs. We gotta turn on all the lights. Okay, so we got these. Good there. Shooting empty houses is always a little bit harder uh, just because like I love using foreground when I can. There's a lot less foreground in a house that's completely empty like this, so. Um, we'll, we'll make do. It's still a really beautiful house. Oh, and side note, for this customer, I do all of his videos horizontal, the good old fashioned way, because he's more of a commercial client. Um, I wouldn't say, I'd say more of his customers are gonna, are gonna find him on his website, maybe on his LinkedIn, um, more professional platforms, and, and therefore I kind of assume people are maybe seeing those more on, on desktop, horizontal facing screens. I've been ragged on a little bit in the past for shooting as much vertical video as I do. And it's like, I don't, it's not going away anytime soon. Like why wouldn't you at least offer it to all of your clients? Something else I've been doing more lately has been cranking the ISO up to 12.8 on the FX3 because it can, and it looks super clean. And I'll just raise that f-stop up to, let's see, in this case, I'm gonna raise it up to f7. Just because when you're at f7, you're gonna have a lot more in focus. And in real estate, you pretty much want everything to be pretty sharp. So f7, 12.8, 1 over 125, crushing it. Just had a comment on my last video asking what I do with white balance. It's always different. Man, it's always different. For the most part, ceilings are white. So you can try to kind of match the ceiling, but I mean, I'm always, I'm, I'm adjusting my white balance um, manually, pretty much every room I move into, just to, to try to get that true to life feel. These kids are listening to Kanye. I don't know how much, I don't know how much it's picking up in my microphone, but it is loud.
there's only so many movements that you can do with a gimbal in an empty house. But one thing that I'm definitely keeping in mind with this one is staying close to the walls so as to make the best use out of that 24. Because like I said, normally I'm, I'm on the 14. I thought there's a bug flying around. So there's like three focal spots of this house. One is definitely the kitchen, two, the gym, the basketball court, and three, uh, the outside. I mean, this place looks really, really sick from the road. I pretty much always walk forward and then get the same shot walking backwards. Usually I like that shot walking backwards more. It's just smoother every time. But I always, I always just keep recording for both. All right, so this is our first bedroom. Empty. Looks like they've got a, yeah. They've got like a Jack and Jill set up where the bathroom's in the middle, two beds on either side. So pretty sweet. Now, this is where we kind of get to be creative with the 24. Nope, I didn't like that. This is where we get to be a little creative with the 24. Perfect. And that extra 10 millimeters makes a huge difference in between 14 and 24. So this bathroom is really bright. So we're bumped back down to ISO 800. Nope, oh, turn on the sinks. Don't forget to turn on those sinks. Good. Good, now creep into the bathroom. Never gonna say that sentence again. And one thing you gotta be careful with in these houses too, is you can't crank up the shutter too much because then you get this banding. Um, but the other problem is if you lower that back down and you raise up your f-stop, then you lose that depth of field. See how that door isn't very blurry at all? It's just, you gotta, you gotta choose your enemy, I guess. Last but not least, details in the kitchen. Proceed. Kind of parallax, go down. Ugh, there's a bug in here and it keeps buzzing my shot. Can't have this looking like a dirty house. Cause it's not, it's clean. There we go. That's good, that's good. Okay. Get that hood shot. We'll pay a premium for that good hood. Oh, you got that good hood. You got a hood? I don't know about you guys, I got a microwave above my oven. Okay. Put this pot filler on display. Can't really fill a pot, but we can at least show it off. Okay. Dude, just these detail shots, I'm a sucker for them, man. That's my favorite part of the day. Every day. Come on, gimbal. I wonder if it's about time to retire this gimbal. It's uh, getting a little clunky. She ain't what she used to be. This is the RS2. Um, I watched the keynote for the RS3. Man, talk about underwhelming the things that they decided to add on. If they would have added on self-balancing somehow, some way, that's the future, let me tell you. The future of gimbals is self-balancing, self-leveling. If they would have added something like that, sold. Not even that, like I don't need self-balancing, that would be sick. But if they were to add these little knobs that you can fine tune and screw to the exact position on all the axes, sold. I would love that. 
but I think the only big upgrade that they did was like self-locking. Um, maybe a little more payload. I don't, I don't remember everything they, they added with the RS3, but it wasn't worth it. It was a yawn fest when I watched that thing. It's like, ooh, that's it? That's all you did? All right, we have one of these situations again where <laughs> tricky bathroom mirror right in front. So I do want to try to show off this bathroom a little bit, which means that we get to, first of all, turn this back up, turn this back down, go up with the ISO, duck, duck and push. That's the move. Let's angle that up a little bit so we're not just looking at the toilet. There we go. That's good, that's good, that's good. It was okay, it wasn't great, but it was good. All right, so I'm done in the main house. I would still like to get the gymnasium and there's actually a little outbuilding out back, so I'll try to get that. Um, but let me just get a little bit of the exterior before I do anything else. Um, just make sure we're is there a fire over there? What's going on? Okay. Okay, so this one we got ISO 800, one over 400, and shutter speed, or sorry, f-stop at 13. Try to get a few details here of the, of the beams. And it is hot out here. This would be pretty to come out in the morning first thing. Bunch of cedar, cedar looking wood. I don't know my woods, but that looks like cedar. All right, so I'm gonna get the majority of the exterior with the drone. Um, just because of how incredible that thing is. So let me go in and get the gym real quick. Probably not gonna film myself getting the gym just because there's kids playing in there. Push in on the middle. Man, this is nice. Now I got some shots. Cool, thank you. We got it. All right, so we're good to go, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the drone up first. Yeesh, this thing is droopy. Okay. Like I said before, this house has three key features that need to be highlighted pretty prominently in the video. Don't forget the drone, that's the whole reason we're here. One reason, or one feature is just this outdoor space. It's huge, I think they've got a ton of property. House looks really interesting. Um, the kitchen, I mean, that's the heart of the home, as they say. And then that basketball court, which I got plenty of footage of the basketball court last year when I was out here. I actually got some guys playing around on the court, so. Got some 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 action shots. So this is the Mavic 3 Pro. It's amazing. I love this thing. It's like it's funny. I actually catch myself flying this thing at like six feet above the ground and like getting basically gimbal shots or what I'd get walking around with my gimbal. Um, it's like why do I do that? Because I, I really trust this the sensor of this camera. It looks so good. Looks so clean. It's easy to match my FX3. So like if I can shoot the exterior of a house with just the drone and not have to worry about the gimbal, then heck yeah, why not? Save time, live better. DJI. Okay. Good shots of this outbuilding here. Now, um, I shamefully do shoot everything in um, kind of the normal picture profile mode because 
the flat on DJI, man, it is so flat. It looks black and white. That's how flat it looks. And I haven't gotten used to knowing what, um, uh, you know, a good exposure looks like. Um, I need to work on it. I need to practice more with this drone, but um, definitely not, not ready to shoot in flat mode quite yet, even though that gives me a little bit more clearance and post. This client in particular, some of his videos can be a little bit longer because gosh, I've shot huge facilities that he has built. Um, and I mean, I, I'm making numbers up, but like 100,000 square foot factories and whatnot. And it's like, how do you, you can't, sometimes it's hard to fit all that in one minute, even though that one minute mark is kind of my, my thing. Ugh, sorry, Ugh, sorry about the audio. You can't, I, I don't know where to hide. Favorite thing about this drone is the seven times zoom that I think I read somewhere. It's like a, it's like a 155 millimeter or something crazy like that. Like, dude, it's such a unique perspective. I feel like I've talked a lot less about actually shooting. I've just been rambling this whole time, but. Um, a lot of my videos, I like to start them off with at least a, a, a high wide shot like this, just to establish establish the setting. You know, that's that's nothing unique. That's that's not new. I'm not original for that. However, um, this is Amish country where I'm at right now, so might might be able to drone a horse and buggy if we're lucky. One more, maybe a couple more shots to get. One of which is of cows. I don't know whose cows these are, but they are mine to shoot. Like watch this, that was the wide angle. Let's get the tight angle. I'm just getting shots of cows now, no big deal. This is my full-time job. Excellent. That was the best cow shot I've gotten this year. Bring it on home, John B. Oh boy. Uh, I just, I about crashed this drone just now. Do not do that again. Okay, we're all set. Good job, job well done.